morning everybody we are going to start can we start okay so um, my name is Fabio Bellifemine I'm a project manager in Telecom Italia uh, I work in the innovation department and uh, uh, my my activity is about uh, uh, smart grid and uh, which services we can provide to which new services we can provide to our customers through this evolution of the smart grid. Uh, so it's my pleasure to accept the invitation of Professor Corno to, to, to present my project uh, to, to, to this, uh, to this, in this course. And, uh, 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 well, of course, there is a, a good thing and a, and, a bad, and a bad thing. The good thing is that uh, in, uh, in this lesson, there is not going to, to be any formula. The, techni the technical part is very, very limited. No formula, no equation. The bad thing is that it's going to take a bit more than what you are <laughs> happy to do. And uh, uh, so it, it will be in, in two parts. Uh, the first part uh, is going to take about uh, one hour and uh, I'll be the speaker for the first part. In the second part, uh, uh, two colleagues of mine, actually, they work at uh, the Instituto Boella, Riccardo Tomasi and Ivan Grimaldi, will, uh, uh, will continue and make the, the, the second part of the, of the lesson. So, uh, uh, actually, what uh, I'm going uh, to, to tell you is a story. It's a story about uh, the smart grid and how an evolution in a quite far uh, domain in respect to the old, quite an, uh, how an evolution in the electricity domain can provide requirements and uh, 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 innovation in the smart home domain. So the, how your know-how about ambient intelligence can uh, get these requirements and uh, put this requirement into action, create something relevant also for the smart grid domain. So that's why the title is where smart grid meets smart homes. So let me start with the question. Do you know what is a smart grid? Do you have an idea of what is a smart grid? Is, is a new term for you or it's something that you have heard in, in the past? I see someone saying yes. Uh, okay, but anyway, a smart grid is a, uh, we are talking about electricity, so the electrical grid, of course. And smart is be because it's going to be different. So let me start with saying why it's going to be different. Do you have any guess about why there is a need to make a smart grid? Why the, the grid as it is today is not good? So... So w one answer is because you can optimize in congestion, you can optimize energy generation, reducing waste. And uh, other questions. So let me say that the why is in this picture here. And maybe you can guess what is this picture. <laughs> No, actually, this picture is the evolution of the humanity. <laughs> How many people <laughs> since the start of the Earth we have? And you can see that at a, at a certain point in time, this evolution became exponential. And because we have an ethical view that everybody should have access to the same amount of energy, the grid as it is today is going to fail. So we need an evolution. So this is, <laughs> so sorry for some, some slides are in Italian, but I, I hope you can guess the, 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 also the meaning in English. No? So that's why we need a, a smart grid. So going toward that, uh, this is probably more, more uh, uh, known, more understandable, is that the CO2 concentration increased uh, uh, since the industrial uh, uh, era, uh, no, I should not move. Since the industrial era, uh, it increased in a, in a very important uh, way, the concentration of CO2, and so we have to reduce uh, CO2 concentration in order to 
reduce the impact on the climate changes. So that is another why. And another why is that uh, the demand of energy is increasing. And in this picture, we see how it increased uh, in, uh, in, uh, at the at, uh, worldwide level. And another why is about the peak. Not only the energy increases, but also the, uh, uh, the demand peak increased. And because you know that every network uh, is designed on the base of the peak load, also for the grid, the grid was uh, designed for a certain peak, but you see that uh, since uh, 1980 to these years, the, the peak increased uh, from uh, about 30 gigawatt to 56 gigawatts, so about two times, the network had to be redesigned. The, net, the grid network had to be redesigned. So that's why it's smart. And this is, this is the, uh, the peak on the Italian network, but you can guess that it's almost similar in the other uh, countries. Mm? And uh, this reduction is because of the crisis, and now there is again a, a slow reduction but we hope that the crisis will, uh, uh, will soon uh, uh, disappear and we will start again. What is interesting is also the graph on the, on the uh, right side because it says that uh, the, the load increased uh, the 90% of the peak for just 2% of the time. So that's very wasteful because you have to design a, a network uh, for just 2% of the time. You have to design on the peak, and the peak is just for 2%. So it's a great uh, uh, value, it's a great benefit for the grid if we can reduce the peak, hmm? if we find ways to reduce the peak. Okay, this is, okay, you, you see also this, uh, this uh, uh, um, sentence here, it says that for 90% of the time, we use less than 50% of the load of the peak. So as a network designer, it's very wasteful. So what? So these are the problems. So what? The what is that uh, in Europe, we had a, 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 the so-called 2020 packet, which says uh, we have to change the energy policy in order to be more sustainable, in order to increase competitiveness and security of the, uh, of the generation. We, don't, we, don't, we have to depend less from uh, uh, other countries, particular some type of countries where there are problems. And so uh, at the European level, some goals were set about uh, reducing, sorry, about increasing the, uh, uh, the percentage of renewables, reducing the CO2, and reducing the consumption. And these goals means in the first two times, we have to increase photovoltaic. And in the, last, in the last item, in order to reduce consumption, we have to add smartness. So smartness, efficiency, is something that starts to appear. And now we will see what it means to the smart home. Okay, this is how the uh, in Italy, the uh, uh, photovoltaic uh, uh, increased. So you see that, uh, again, it's exponential. Every, every time something uh, happens, it's always exponential and makes problems. Uh, but uh, uh, having an exponential uh, uh, increase, of course, uh, requires time and requires uh, uh, countermeasures to adapt to this, uh, to this uh, problem. In particular, in Italy, what happened that uh, because there was an increase in the, uh, in the percentage of renewable, renewable uh, um, what happened is that uh, the, uh, the time, uh, the peak uh, hours, so the, the hours in which the energy cost more, shifted from, uh, 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 from, uh, um, uh, day from uh, 7 p.m., 8 p.m., uh, excuse me, from uh, uh, when cost more, uh, uh, from uh, night uh, time 
to uh, 7 to 8 p.m. No? You see in this graph here, this is the blue one is in 2004, the cost of the energy. And you see that we had the two peaks at uh, uh, 10 uh, a.m. at uh, uh, 5 p.m. And then in uh, the projection to 2016 is that at 7 p.m. the energy will cost much more. So there is a, a change in this one. Uh, a change, and also here you can see this is a snapshot for the, uh, for the, on the energy market. And so this is the hour, hourly pri price uh, per hour of the energy. You see that there are, there are times when the energy costs zero. Actually, in some countries, there are times where the energy costs less than zero. So you get paid if you consume energy. So all this evolution in the grid, all this modification in the grid means that not just the grid have to be, has to become smart, but also at the consumption side. So the smart home has to become smart in order to exploit these modification, these changes, and in order to uh, help the grid in, uh, in becoming more reliable and more robust. Okay, so that introduced the vision of the Energy at Home Association, that is the association, an association of companies that I have the pleasure to coordinate, and the vision is the following. Every consumer, even residential consumers like have a degree of flexibility in the way they consume energy. So think about uh, uh, the washing machine and the dishwasher. You can, uh, you can program the, dish, uh, the, the washing machine, and then you don't mind at what time it starts. You have a degree of flexibility. You can shift in time. And maybe you can shift in time selecting the time when, where the energy costs less, or the time where, the, uh, where your PV system, your photovoltaic system produces energy, synchronized with the forecast. So you have a degree of flexibility on time. You have a de degree of flexibility also on energy. Think about the uh, air conditioning system. Maybe when uh, the energy costs more, you can accept that your air conditioning reduces by one degree the temperature two degree the temperature is a small re comfort reduction, maybe neglectable, and a, a large bill reduction, maybe uh, important reduction. No? So this is to simplify. So the message is each consumer has a degree of flexibility in the way he consumes energy. And this degree of flexibility can be managed by some intelligence by some ambient intelligence in the home in order to do what? First of all, to make a local optimization. I told you before two use cases. One use case is about, uh, um, I have a photovoltaic system. So for, for, uh, uh, to, in, to increase the, uh, the value of this photovoltaic system, it's beneficial to synchronize my loads with the, uh, the generation. So it's a local optimization. Another example of local op optimization is avoid avoiding the overload. Uh, in Italy, we have this threshold of three kilowatt. Majority people has three kilowatt of power. And if you move from three kilowatt to the higher contractual power, of course, you get more benefit, but of course, you pay much more. So a local system that optimizes and schedules the loads can provide benefit and other type of benefit. Uh, we have a, a peak and off-peak uh, tariff, so day and night tariff. Again, you can imagine a, a local system that optimizes. So this is the first way we can optimize, but we can all, uh, oh yes, and uh, the, the vision of the association is that these services can exploit the same service provisioning infrastructure of the smart home services, of the ambient intelligence service. So why having a different, I, I need a communication with the washing machine, with the, the electricity system, with the plugs. Why should I have a different uh, uh, technology instead of the um, home security system and the, instead of the uh, lighting control system. I might reuse. Reuse 
means reducing cost. So I create a, a scope economy between two different domains. That's where your know-how on ambient intelligence matches uh, this, uh, this story that I'm telling you about smartphone. So the vision is that, okay, we need, we have new requirements, we need new services, we can exploit the same service provisioning infrastructure of the smartphone. And the vision continues saying, okay, now that I have flexibility, that each consumer has flexibility, this flexibility can become a service that me as a consumer provide to the grid. So imagine that uh, uh, in Italy, Enel, but anyway, some actor in the grid has a congestion problem, as your uh, colleagues told before, and ask all the consumers, all the customers, to reduce uh, their uh, energy consumption. You, the, the, the operator saves the congestion, create a value because maybe it has to, uh, to shift in time for a few years a, a need for investment. So in order to solve the congestion, I need to increase the, the network, uh, the capacity of the network. But if I can solve the congestion by asking people to reduce consumption, this is a service that people provide to me, that customer provide to me. So the vision is that properly managed may be aggregated to a set of customers, this flexibility can become a service from the customer to the grid, using again the same service provisioning infrastructure. Does that make sense so far? Is understandable what I told you? Okay, I see some yes, some yes. So the story that I told you so far is that there is a, a push from the grid to make the grid smarter because of uh, external factor. And this push can be exploited in the smart home by uh, making new services in the smart home, exploiting the same service provisioning infrastructure. You have studied, uh, I guess, uh, Connex, uh, uh, Wi-Fi, don't know, Zigbee, whatever. You have studied uh, some protocols. These protocols can be exploited in order to provide also these services. This is the story that I told you. So no technician, no technicality so far. Okay, and there are a lot of many other drivers that pushes for this story, like uh, introduction of photovoltaic, introduction, diffusion, massive diffusion of air conditioning and heating pumps, also for heating, not just for refreshing. So more and more introduction. Um, uh, residential storage uh, not, not yet started, but there is a, a, a big hype about the possibility of reducing the cost of storage down to a cost affordable by a consumer. So having a residential storage system where I store energy. Uh, electric vehicle it will change the, the, the grid system when there will be this new type of load, very important load induction cooking, eh? and also smart appliances. S smart appliances, you, you don't buy a smart appliance because of the smart grid. You buy a smart appliance because it's, uh, don't know, it's uh, cool, because it's something uh, very high technology, no? But when you have the, that smart appliance, you exploit the same smart appliance also for these smart grid services that I told you. So economy of scope. So these are all the drivers that are uh, at, uh, at a European level. There are al already uh, uh, important discussion at the political level, also regulation and political level, about the possibility of having a full electric system, so no gas. So, so far we have in our homes in Italy in particular, we have both uh, methane gas electricity and telecommunication. Telecommunication is reducing, uh, unfortunately, because people use the mobile, and so the, the fixed line is reducing. But also there is a push towards uh, avoiding gas that is more dangerous, and that can be uh, substituted by heating pumps, induction cooking, and microwave cooking.
So all of that is going to create a change. In this big uh, uh, scenario, uh, the, uh, this association that is called energy at home that I told you that uh, uh, I coordinate uh, is working, is working in this scenario. So it is, it's a, a new way of uh, collaborating. So collaboration also among competitors because you can see that there are, uh, uh, for instance, Telecom Italia and Vodafone, there are uh, Indesit, Electrux and Whirlpool, so competitors in the same market there are different industrial sectors that collaborate. So in order to create a smart home, we need to converge and agree upon a single data model and a single way to communicate with the appliances, to communicate with the smart meter of Enel, to communicate with the photovoltaic system. So there is, it's unlikely that a, a single industrial sector alone will be able to create the standard. So that's why there is a need for collaboration. Okay, this is. So the scope of the association at, at this point should be quite uh, understood, understandable. Where the smart grid meets the smart home. How the smart grid meets the smart home. So far the grid meets the home through the meter. The meter is the connection point. The vision is that the meter will change We'll have an ICT interface. We'll have the capability of uh, providing services from the customer to the grid, providing time of use pricing. So a revolution in this way. So what uh, uh, Energy Atom is going, uh, is going to do, defining uh, how all the, uh, all the devices of the home communicate each other and how the home communicates with the, with the grid and vice versa. The so-called smart grid connection point. This is a terminology from the European Commission. So quite uh, well uh, accepted. Okay, uh, so I told you about uh, uh, the type of services. Now I would like to, do, to give you a flavor of what is the value, the benefit for the users, for the consumers in, you know, the, in having these uh, benefits, this type of services. No? So uh, this is a cost benefit analysis. Actually, I will present just the benefit side because for the benefit is more accepted for the cost. Uh, for instance, smart appliances cost still a lot because there is not yet a market traction, so you can expect that in a few years the cost will be used. So the benefit actually, cost, the title of the slide is misleading, benefit analysis. First type of benefit is that if we have a system that is able to manage the user flexibility, the flexibility in consumption, in order to adapt, the to synchronize the loads with the generation for a photovoltaic user, we can create a value of the order of 100 to 300, approximately 300 euro per year by increasing the, uh, the amount of self-consumed energy. There is a value because it's energy that I don't buy from the network, but I produce myself. And the value is this one. Second uh, uh, benefit is uh, the overload control. If we allow those users who in Italy have a, 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 contra, a, a contractual power of 4.5 kilowatt, and we allow these users to go down to 3 kilowatt, so going to the default, uh, by using the, the tariff that we have today, we can create under the same energy consumption, so just going down in the maximal power that we, you can use, we can create a value of about 200 euro per year which is a big value. Maybe if we sum the two values, I mean, there is a, a big, um, there is a, a, a sense for business. Uh, the, the third category of, of uh, benefit is for every consumer. And first of all is energy awareness. If I can provide a, a, a monitoring system that allows uh, each user to, un to understand how we consume energy, there is a, a, a so-called energy awareness uh, uh, 
benefit that uh, uh, is evaluated in five to 10% consumption in the energy. If you know how and why you consume, you can optimize your consumption. And uh, in the current uh, tariff scheme of Italy, it's about uh, 40 to 70 euro. And for the future, a system like the system that I told you can exploit dynamic pricing schemes. We don't know what will be the value, but if the energy is going to change, the cost of energy is going to change hour by hour or 15 minutes by 15 minutes, the same way as on the energy market happens, because in the uh, Italian, in, in the all uh, countries energy market, the cost of energy changes 15 minutes by 15 minutes. But in our houses, in our contracts, the cost of energy doesn't change so much. But if we create a, an infrastructure that is able to provide this dynamicity, this the, the dynamism from the market down to each appliance, we can create a value. We don't know how much because it's not yet uh, available. And f first, uh, uh, re uh, last revenue of stream is the demand side flexibility. What I told you, if the customer can provide a service to the grid operator in order to help in making the grid more reliable, uh, solving congestion, uh, um, uh, managing the balancing between generation and consumption, this is a service that can create a revenue of stream to the final customer. So these are the benefits of the system that we are talking about. Okay, the architecture of the uh, energy at home that we, we have defined so far is here in, the, in this picture. So we have uh, the Telecom Italia gateway, the modem gateway, the modem router, where we have a, an OSGI environment, an execution environment. I, I guess that you know what is OSGI because it's correct, Fulvio, they, they know already what is OSGI. It's an OSGI environment where applications can be installed and executed. <coughs> so uh, uh, we have uh, um, smart appliances that communicate via Zigbee radio. We use the Zigbee as a communication technology. We have legacy appliances where we use a smart plug. So a plug that has a, a radio, a meter, and a switch to switch on and off. And then we have a special device from Enel that is called Smart Info that al allows to communicate with the meter, with the smart meter. This is the Smart Info. So you see that it's very um, compact. And the, 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 the great benefit is that without changing the meters that we have already in Italy, smart, uh, the user are just to install in any plug in the house this device, and you can get communication with the meter. So you can get data with the meter. So we have fresh, real-time data from the meter, and we can implement, for instance, overload control, by all the use cases that I told you before. Okay. Of course, we have uh, uh, in the cloud, we have a platform where we, um, we store data and uh, we have some algorithms in the cloud. Uh, yes, in, for those users who have a photovoltaic system, so the photovoltaic, the inverter, the, the production meter, and we have a, another smart info. So far, there is a limitation that one of these devices per meter is needed. So if you have two meters, you need two devices. And uh, last, we have uh, um, in the cloud uh, um, a forecast uh, system that is able to, to forecast the generation. That allows uh, uh, to implement a use case where the, the user loads are synchronized with the, with the weather. When there is sun, you you start load, you start the smart appliance. What, uh, what time is it? Okay, mezz'ora, mezz'ora. Okay, okay. Uh, devices in energy. Tom, well, just I would like to to 
emphasize uh, this, uh, this graph here. So all the devices that I told you before, the smart plug, uh, the smart meter of Enel, this one, the, the gateway of Telecom Italia and so on, have been specified by this association. The scope of the association, the goal of the association is to define the rules, the technical specification and the rules of the system. Uh, in particular, for the smart appliance, there is a, a special data model that is the power profile that is here on, on the slide that uh, uh, represent the need in uh, energy, in power of each appliance. So think about uh, a washing machine. A washing machine has a set of phases. Pre-wash, wash, where there is a need to eat uh, water, so there is a high need for uh, power, I don't know, rinse, uh, spin, and so on. No? So this power profile is a vector of phases. For each phase, there is uh, the description of the expected duration, the peak power consumption, the expected energy consumption in the phase, and the maximum activation delay that is allowed for that phase. In this, with this data structure, we enable a scheduler. So the scheduler receives the data structure. So imagine the user is in front of the washing machine, programs, select the cycle, 60 degree uh, uh, cotton, selects the cycle. The washing machine sends the power profile to the, to the scheduler. The scheduler uses information about the weather, inform the weather forecast, information about uh, the uh, cost of the energy, peak hour and off peak hour, and sends back a power profile where all the activation delays have a number, have, an, uh, have a value. In this way, we can schedule smart appliances in an automatic way. And this is what happens in reality. Does, is that clear? Okay. Okay, so this data structure is particularly powerful because it enables scheduling. And what enables, it enables not just I schedule the start time of the washing machine and then the washing machine takes uh, one hour, two hours, whatever. I can schedule phase by phase taking into consideration the constraint of that program cycle. For instance, you know, cotton, maybe cotton can stay one hour in, uh, uh, in the water without problems, but maybe uh, other type of uh, clothes need, uh, can I accept just a few minutes. So you take into consideration. Well, this is just a bit of uh, publicity of our uh, project, uh, the achievements that we had. So this uh, energy at home was um, the main contributor uh, in producing the standard ZigBee Home Automation 1.2. As a matter of fact, Home Automation 1.2 is 1.1 plus energy at home. <laughs> so what we were the main contribution. We have a, a, a prototype system that actually it's at the Instituto Boella premises, so it's very close to you. Maybe you can uh, schedule later a visit uh, to, to see the, the system. And it's, uh, it's powerful in my, in my opinion because, not for the functionality, but because it integrates 11 different devices and systems. So it's really a, a proof of interoperability. So it's not the system of a single vendor. And I don't know if you can imagine, but if you have to define a technical standard if you don't have the constraint of getting the agreement with the other, your speed is 10 times faster. But if you get the constraint that in a world scenario where you have Philips, you have Sony, you have Telecom Italia, ANL, and blah, 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 everybody should agree on the same standard, you go 10 times slower. <laughs> because agreement is a value, but it costs time and effort. Okay, so this system is integration of 11 different devices. We have some trials, one is in Italy. Your professor is one of the trialists. <laughs> and uh, we have an open source project that is called Gemma, and that is the subject of the uh, next presentation of my colleagues. And uh, okay, we have cost-benefit analysis, but it's probably less relevant. 
Okay, as, uh, just as a lesson learned maybe for uh, your future uh, work, uh, we found a very, uh, uh, very powerful, very uh, useful uh, uh, and adapts and adopts approach, which means that uh, we have, uh, uh, as an association, we have requirements, technical requirements. We need to integrate, for instance, this new device but we don't start from scratch. We look at what is available. We identify the best candidates. So what are the standards available? We identify the gaps. We fill the gaps and we go back into that standard in order to have these gaps approved, adapted, adopted, excuse me, adopted. So this was a very powerful approach. So far we, we succeeded. I hope also in the future. So we, uh, we use the ZigBee, uh, uh, ZigBee technology. And because we use the ZigBee technology, we get as a, an added value that is not just for energy, for smart appliances. But ZigBee was already for home automation, for comfort, for security. And we get that for free because we use. So we can integrate uh, a presence sensor um, uh, um, a door uh, opening uh, sensor because it was done by Zigbee and not by Energy Top. But in this way, as I told before, we can use the same service provisioning infrastructure, smart home service provision, to provide both smart grid services and smart home services. Okay. Now let me. Uh, uh, give you a, a few uh, information from the trial. I told you that we made a trial, actually we made five trials, but uh, uh, one of these trials is in Italy, the others are outside Italy, and just in, in just one of these trials, Telecom Italia participated, because Energy Atom is an association of 22 companies, so uh, there are much more activity that I know. No? So uh, in our trial, we installed uh, this uh, system composed of uh, the Smart Info, the Gateway of Telecom Italia, five smart plugs, and a washing machine. We installed into 56 uh, uh, private houses with normal families continue to work and see what, uh, continue to live and see what happens. And of course, what we tried to educate them is create efficiency, energy efficiency. And when you think about efficiency, you can work at three levels. The, the building, so uh, the concrete, how, how, the, how the building is done, improve the, the way the building is done. You can work at the level of the devices, so making the devices more efficient. And finally, at the level of the usage, how the, uh, how the system how the user uses the system. Of course, we couldn't work at the first two layers, so we worked on the usage. So trying to educate users in using better what they have. And uh, uh, we were inspired by uh, this uh, research of uh, uh, Professor Filippi and Professor Corniati from the Energy Department of Polytechnic of Torino that actually uh, uh, is an evidence that of occupant behavior matters. And uh, in particular, what this graph presents is uh, in, uh, in Denmark, uh, about 300 houses, identical houses, same size, all uh, uh, same orientation, same type of uh, building, same type of concrete. They, uh, they, the only change was uh, the way the the occupant, the, the behavior of the occupants, the way the houses were used. And you can see that there was a big uh, uh, deviation in the consumed energy. All, all these houses had the same energy label, that probably was uh, D, uh, probably was D, but actually the, there was a big deviation, three times higher, the highest consumptions under the, the, big, uh, uh, the big bell of the Gaussian, three, uh, the highest consumption is more than three times higher than the lower ones. 
and the only difference is the occupant. So it means that without spending too much money in changing your devices and in changing your building, if you educate users, you can obtain up to three times uh, uh, reduction. And this is the way we tried to, to, to do in our trial. And I hope that in the next slides I have some results. I don't remember, but I hope so. These are the functionalities uh, of the uh, web application that we provided. Well, quite, uh, I think that is all what I told uh, so far. So uh, energy awareness per uh, device. So for each device, we could say how much they were, con they were consuming standby consumption in energy and in uh, euro, in cost, uh, forecast of the production, scheduling, warning, and so on, and consumer behavior, comparison between consumers. So in the trial, we had uh, 50 users. We could provide them comparison between, uh, uh, between their behavior. These are some snapshots. Well, what is relevant is that we used also the display of the washing machine. For instance, on the washing machine, we, 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 we sent also the cost of the program and the absorbed power and the energy of the house. And also some text, uh, some text messages on the, on the display. And these are the from the trial. First result, by providing this type of functionality to users, on the average, we measured a, a reduction, a saving in consumption of 9%. I told you that the literature say between 5 and 10. Actually, we, we, we measured 9, 9%. Uh, that maybe for a single user is not so much. It's about 40 euro per year. But if you multiply to a, a country level, it becomes a very relevant uh, amount of energy. Uh, we, uh, we couldn't convince people to go back to three kilowatt, those users who had four or five or six kilowatt of uh, contractual power. But we could uh, measure that it was possible by using the scheduler of the smart appliances, because all the times where the power consumption bypassed uh, uh, three kilowatt, there was at least one smart appliance working. So if the smart appliance, uh, one appliance work, if the appliance was a smart appliance dishwasher, we could schedule the dishwasher outside the, the range of the three kilowatt. We also measured that uh, uh, by providing awareness of the way of the way energy is used, we could uh, uh, we could convince uh, we could measure a, a shift of five percent of the energy consumption from the peak period to the off-peak period. So we could create this one, and finally a reduction in the standby consumption on average by fifteen percent. So that is a conclusion that uh, with a, a, a neglectable uh, cost of the hardware, you can generate uh, a benefit of 9%, and you can imagine how much you have to invest in, uh, in the envelope of your building in order to have the same saving. So with a very small, just working on the education of the people. Okay, the last uh, uh, part of, the, um, of my presentation is about demand-side flexibility. So I told you that as a final goal, we want to make the, this flexibility becomes a service from the customer to the grid. Okay, so this is what I, I want to talk to you now in another uh, 10 uh, min minutes. Okay, the, uh, this uh, picture uh, uh, is, an, is the 
envisioned architecture. No? So uh, this is the house, and in the house we have some type of uh, devices which are storage device, energy storage device, some loads, device for eating, eating for generation. We have a, a head end that is called the customer energy management system, and that is the connection point with the smart grid. On the smart grid level, we can communicate uh, with the house by sending price signals. So, for instance, time of use uh, tariff, every hour we change, or network signals. The congestion uh, uh, example is very relevant. There is a congestion, the network send a signal, there is a congestion, try to do what you can by using the flexibility. So the point is that now we addressed is that, okay, the vision is that we can exploit this flexibility, but how much flexibility we really have in our houses? So in the next slides, I'll try to give an answer to this question. How much flexibility the typical, the average customer is able to provide in theory? So uh, what we did is we started from a, a, a study of uh, 2011 uh, that provides for 1,000 uh, houses, 1,000 families, the power load for each type of load. So the power load of the, of the washing machine, of the dishwasher, of the lights, of the TV, the boiler, and blah, 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 for each one. So here, in this uh, picture here, you have the total and the break uh, down into each type of loads. Maybe later you will be, be able also to read the name of the load. Not, I don't think here, but maybe you can read later. Okay, and then what we did, okay, we classified each load in flexible and uncontrollable. What is a flexible load? I don't know. I guess uh, we have told about the washing machine. So for equal cost. Washing machine is surely flexible in time. Uh, the, the dishwasher is flexible in time. Uh, the tumble dryer is flexible in time. And uh, uh, so these are the time shiftable loads. And then there are other loads which are uh, modulable. Tem you can set the temperature, the air conditioning, heating pump, you can set it. Also, the, the, the relevant finding of this simple classification is that more than 60% of the consumption of a residential customer in Italy is flexible. And because the trend is that we are going to have more and more diffusion of heating pumps, more and more diffusion of air conditioner, more and more diffusion of electrical vehicle, all these, uh, so this percentage will increase because all these loads are flexible and be controlled. Okay, that is an evidence that uh, there is uh, uh, food to eat. Okay. No, not just in energy, but also in power because you see that uh, the... Uh, in power, uh, each consumer on average uh, contributes with about uh, 600 watt to the peak, and uh, half of this uh, power is controllable, is flexible. So you can uh, work on the flexibility to reduce the peak that I told at the beginning of my presentation, the peak of the demand. Okay, this is... Uh, uh, this slide is reported with one hour. If we ask for a flexibility of one hour, so reduce the uh, loads for one hour, how much energy and how much power we can get from uh, an average customer. This is an average. It's uh, averaged by, by 1,000, uh, averaged by the Italian population because takes into account the diffusion of the refrigerator, washing machine, tumble dryer, air conditioner, and everything. So on average, we can get 300 watt hour per user. And if you multiply by 
about uh, two, uh, 20 million users in Italy, you get a very big, uh, very big amount of energy. So this is again an evidence that there is food to it. <clears throat> okay, this is just a, a, a says, uh, these are time shiftable loads and these are temperature modulable loads. These are homogeneous over 24 hours. You can imagine about boiler, refrigerator, are in this category, while uh, dishwasher, washing machine, and tumble dryer are in this category. And people tend to use it uh, uh, just after uh, uh, 6 uh, p.m., this type of loads. No? That this is to, yeah. this is the last slide that I have. So just to say that what we envision is that a set of incremental steps towards flexibility as a service, where the first step is what we achieved already, defining the rules for a local infrastructure to allow communication between home devices, then creating tools that improve, increase user awareness about energy. I have to say that the uh, majority of people are really blind about energy. When uh, we started the trial, we made interviews asking to people, uh, before we started the trial, ask, asking people, in your opinion, what is the load, the appliance that consumes more? What do you think that people said? Lamp, no, they didn't say lamp. They said washing machine. That's also, also the reason why we use the washing machine. But the reality is that um, is the refrigerator, first position. Second position is TV, television, in particular plasma TV. Um, then uh, we have uh, uh, console boxes, computer console boxes game console boxes because we use for a lot. And dishwasher, uh, washing machine, yes, washing machine consumes a lot. But how many washing machines per week you do? Three, four, don't know. So actually the in energy, the it's not so relevant. It's, I don't know, in fourth or fifth position. But anyway, so people are really blind. If you ask, uh, you, you should save energy. Where do you start from? They say washing machine. Actually, they should start from the north, other uh, in TV and uh, game console. So tools for user awareness, tools and methods to motivate changes in user behavior. We are doing something. We feel that there is still space for, for doing that. But the steps have to go towards an automatic system requiring no user intervention at all, because people are basically lazy. We just want to push a button and everything started at the best, in the best conditions. And finally, in order to have flexibility as a service, we have still to define the customer to grid communication. That is still a pending issue in energy term, but also at European level. Okay, summing up what uh, uh, this is a curiosity. What I told uh, the demand uh, side flexibility, user flexibility, it was used in a trial in Texas, where in January of this year, hundreds of uh, Texas uh, consumers, including also individuals, provided 40, uh, about uh, 500 megawatt of capacity for 40 si 46 minutes. So, what it means that there was a, a request from the grid for 46 minutes, we have a congestion, we have a problem. Please reduce the, the absorbed power. The answer was uh, 500 megawatt of power was reduced. In order to have, uh, in order to inject into the system 500 more, uh, 500 megawatt more, you, you would have needed the construction of a new power plant, average sized power plant. How did they ask to do that? They, uh, they, uh, how did, the question was how did they ask to users to do that? By email, by 
text message. Some... Were not no, users were not expecting that. The users, they just knew that uh, um, uh, they could receive messages asking for uh, this type of uh, reduction. So this is again an evidence that uh, there is a, a lot of third time that I see there is a lot of food for this. Uh, so it may, it's the same value of building a new plant. That means uh, uh, delaying uh, investment. It's a lot of value. Working on education and working on uh, other aspects. Okay, summing up, just to remind what I told you in this story, I told that smart grid is required because there are a lot of people and we have an ethical duty that everyone should get access to the same amount of energy. Uh, as a, 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 in order to do that at the European level, but not just at the European level, some measures have been defined, the so-called 2020-20 packet, and these measures, in order to create energy efficiency, there is a need for introduction of ICT, of smartness, I told that introduction of photovoltaic is not the panacea, it's not the solution, because photovoltaic creates other type of problems. Uh, one over, overall, uh, photovoltaic is not uh, uh, predictable, because if there is a, a cloud, <coughs> you get immediately a reduction of production. But as a user, we don't want that when there is a cloud, uh, the light switches off. So what is done in, the, in, in every grid system is that there are some uh, reserve uh, power plants which are ready to inject and generate new energy as soon as is needed in a very short time. They have to react in minutes. So in, increase, of, increase of photovoltaic without other measures does not solve the problem. And the other measures is that the consumption side must become smart. So smart grid calls for smart homes. Energy at home architecture is a possible solution, is an industrial solution that uh, we provide to this problem. I told that there is a value, there are benefits. For some classes of users, the benefit is relevant, a few hundred uh, euro per year. I told you that occupant behavior matters because you can, by working on educating uh, occupants, we can create uh, even more uh, efficiency than working on uh, um, improving the envelope of the building. Uh, I told you about demand side management, that it's a, a possible way to, to improve the situation. And I told that there are this evolution has to be incremental. So that uh, closes my presentation and close the first part of this uh, lesson. And, and then now I leave the floor to Riccardo Tomasi and the Ivan Grimaldi after the break, after a small break, uh, that will say uh, in practical uh, what are the bricks the software bricks that are available to implement uh, these type of scenarios. Okay. So no question time also or? Yeah, question during the break. Okay, question during the break. Okay, thank you. Okay. So I guess I guess we can start again. Um, my name is Riccardo Tomasi. I uh, I'm a researcher at uh, ISMB, Instituto Boella, just here, you can see it. Uh, in the um, Energy at Home uh, Association, I chair a working group called Demo and Reference Implementation. Uh, what I'm trying to explain today is, uh, uh, first of all, to provide some highlight uh, in the presentation that uh, uh, Fabio just made, uh, and to uh, give some details about the um, reference implementations of the association and why it exists. So uh, I will start by giving some high level information. Then we hopefully we will have a hands on session to see how the code actually works. Uh, and my colleague Ivan Grimaldi will, will take care of that uh, uh, part. So uh, 
First of all, let me start with some highlights uh, in the smart grid and home automation trends. So as um, uh, mentioned by Fabio before, we have this growing share of renewables uh, to be exploited, which is starting a little bit to become a problem for energy operators. Uh, the, the market conditions in the electricity domain are becoming more dynamic. Um, 20 years ago, it was normal to have one price for everybody. Uh, then uh, nowadays in Italy, most people have at least two different prices depending on the time. If you enter the free market, then you, you will have uh, different conditions. Uh, in, industrial, in the industrial domain, we, you get even more uh, uh, in a more complex market because, because you start to see dynamic prices being applied in, in reality. So uh, from the European perspective, this also means that the number of business models and uh, contract frameworks that can appear is, is becoming very complex and you have a, a number of actors that are entering the market. And this explains a little bit why companies such as uh, Telecom Italia and Vodafone, uh, which do telecommunications, are uh, now interested in energy. And why there is, there is a need for collaborating between white goods providers, ICT providers, service integrators, and all these kind of companies that didn't need to collaborate before. So uh, in, all, in this complex and uh, dynamic situation, the, the need of, of uh, exploiting and stimulating the, the flexibility of user loads is becoming a must. OK. Uh, on the home side, we have a home automation domain. Uh, before we, we have saw the, 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 the proposal, the proposition of the Energy Atom Association, but more in general, in home, as you may know, there is a growing number of uh, heterogeneous connected devices. So smart appliances, sensors are, are one thing, but now in any, in any Lidl, I think you can buy uh, for a few euros uh, home automation devices, remote controls, um, which uh, use large number of different standards. Uh, on one hand, the fragmentation of standards is slowly reducing, so we have a few main standards there. We have Wi-Fi, we have Zigbee, we have uh, maybe Z-Wave, Bluetooth, uh, but at least uh, big, com big players at least have understood that uh, trying to push uh, with all their power to uh, proprietary solution is not anymore the, the a winning strategy because uh, um, except for uh, maybe a couple of players, nobody has the, the power to convince every user to use their own proprietary devices. Uh, users nowadays expect that if they buy a uh, washing machine, maybe they don't have, and they, they buy it because it's connected and smart. Uh, they, they don't want to, uh, discover that uh, they, they cannot use the washing machine with their uh, energy provider. So standards are uh, important and uh, companies is, are starting to understand that. Uh, if we want to uh, tap flexibility at home, uh, uh, of course, as you, you may have learned in, 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 uh, if you're studying ambient intelligence, it's something very complex, it requires a lot of knowledge about what uh, uh, devices can do. Uh, tapping flexibility from a fridge is not the same as tapping flexibility from a, a heat pump or a, a maybe a washing machine. The, the way users use those devices are very different. The capabilities are very different. Uh, and uh, on, on the same side, uh, you, are, you have users in home. Uh, Okay, the TV consumes a lot of power, but if you turn it off during the final of the workup, users will get really angry at you because they don't care about a few cents uh, saved when, when there is a, the, the say religion uh, in, in at stake. Um, and uh, so uh, you, you need to have friendly interaction with, with users. Uh, standardization bodies, uh, so this is a definition from a, um, a standardization group in um, jointly organized by three different bodies, which are the SEN, the Senelec, and ETSI. You may know uh, SEN and Senelec are two standardization bodies in the electricity domain, and uh, ETSI 
is a European standardization body more in the ICT side. Um, well, they have this smart grid coordination group and uh, they uh, provided uh, this definition of an uh, entity that uh, has the functional role of putting together the smart grid and the home automation domain. This entity is an abstract entity and uh, it has been called the uh, SAMS, Customer Energy Management System. So, uh, what is uh, uh, CHAMS? A CHAMS is a, a functional component which has the main role of uh, optimizing energy consumption and production in home environment. How can it do it? It can do it by interacting with all connected devices and users, uh, by knowing everything about the consumer preferences and contracts, and if possible, when these are available, also being able to receive grid signal, so either uh, network signals, technical signals, uh, like uh, congestion information or uh, overload information, or also price signals. Uh, in, in this, uh, uh, for this project, we are mostly interested on uh, uh, how the champs can interact with devices. And uh, the, the kind of interaction with devices are usually the collection of consumption information, so instantaneous consumption, power consumption, load profiles, uh, uh, collection, and also some control features such as scheduling, direct control, or configuration. Uh, so, you already saw this, this slide in, in uh, Fabio's presentation, just to uh, show the kind of objects that we are talking about. PV installation, local generation, or storage in case a battery is, is, is installed at home. Smart appliances, we talk about that a lot. Home automation devices, so this is the whole world of uh, uh, system, wired or wireless. Uh, sometimes we have uh, dumb appliances connected through smart plugs, local consumer interfaces, tablets or telephones. And uh, we also have, we need a way to communicate to uh, smart meter. Um, in this case, we, we have, uh, functionally speaking, the device is called smart meter in gateway. And this is the object that Fabio showed you before uh, in the case of the Energy Atom Association, the, the smart info. The, CHAMS normally run on top some kind of home gateway, which is usually a low power device. Um, this is just a, to give the idea, it's a low power PC. You, you can do the same thing by running the CHAMS as a cloud entity, like a service, but of course it gets more complicated because uh, everything could fail if you don't have internet connection. So most of the CHAMS solution today preferably uninstalled in low power gateways. Uh, and from there you get connection to the cloud infrastructure. Challenges for the SAMS, we have a need to interoperate with the standard device technologies in the home network. Uh, if possible, uh, interoperation with mm, consumer side services and applications and uh, uh, since the context is very dynamic and complex, uh, we also need to take into account interoperability with uh, the technical infrastructure of all these different companies. So uh, telco operators have their own infrastructure for managing, managing devices. We need to take this into account. Energy operators have their own infrastructure for metering and managing meters. Uh, service providers have their own cloud. So uh, basically, did that puts a lot of pressure on people working in interoperability. Second big challenge, modularity. Uh, in, in ISMB, we work a lot on projects, energy projects in a, in a various number of uh, countries. And uh, we learned that uh, uh, depending on the country and on, on specific installation, you have a lot of differences. So when you work in Italy, you have the NL meter with the three kilowatts limitation. If you work in Denmark, you have uh, some smart meters deployed, uh, but from different brands and the limit there is 15 kilowatts. Uh, in here, uh, electrical heating is not very common. In Denmark, everybody is switching towards heat pumps for heating because they have a lot of wind power, electricity is cheap. 
So uh, on the champs, this means that uh, uh, it's very difficult to have a single product supporting all the possible use cases, unless that's extremely modular. Um, if you, you, you need something that uh, has a lot of modules, you, when you do a deployment, you only pick the modules that you need for a specific deployment and you deploy them without reinventing the wheel all the time. Uh, security and reliability, finally, uh, this is something that uh, is, is very sensible. It, it's a device that uh, uh, has information about uh, energy consumption of users, uh, so it's very privacy sensitive. Uh, you don't want uh, complaints because uh, hackers uh, switch off all the devices at your home, so uh, security is a must. Uh, the energy at home approach, in this case, yes, in order to cope with this, all these uh, is this requirements, let's say, has been to uh, try and uh, uh, realize the chance through an open ecosystem. Open ecosystems means uh, uh, that uh, interfaces must be open in order to interoperate with a lot of standards. API must be open. And why not? Uh, the source code of the champs running in the gateways is also open source uh, so that uh, any uh, company, even outside the association, can take this solution, change it, and use it for their deployments. Uh, practically, the, the, this uh, uh, led to the decision of, uh, of uh, uh, trying and release uh, the Energy Atom Chance as, a, as an open source project, and the, the name uh, we have chosen is uh, Gemma. Gemma stands for Java Energy Management Application. Uh, uh, so first of all, it's a reference implementation, so it doesn't want to be a commercial product, uh, but uh, something that uh, uh, any company can take and modify to rapidly prototype their system and uh, test it eventually. So uh, it has been firstly released uh, in October 2014, uh, although it derives for several years of uh, development by uh, Telecom Italia. So it's um, even if we decided to start low with the version number because we didn't want to uh, boost it, it's actually a pretty mature solution. Um, the current version is version, version 0 0.2. As you see, we are still quite conservative with version numbers. This is maybe the six, sixth or seventh release, but uh, it has been, this, the latest one has been released a couple of weeks ago. Uh, the, the plan is to release, uh, as you will see, a uh, future version in October. We will jump to 0 0.9 because uh, uh, we also saw that uh, the, the low version numbers scare uh, companies away. Uh, it's uh, hosted on GitHub. You, you may know it. Uh, it uh, this is the, the official website of, of the project. Uh, GitHub is very interesting for us because uh, basically it allows uh, any developers such as you to basically fork our project, work on your own copy, and uh, contribute uh, public, publicly or not without, uh, well, in a very flexible fashion. License. Uh, license, uh, we decided to uh, choose uh, LGPL, not to be confused with GPL only. So L LGPL is a, um, a quite permissive copyleft license. Basically, it means that uh, you can, it can be integrated with basically anything. Uh, this, for, for a, from a company perspective, this means that if you have a commercial development that you want to integrate with Gemma, you can. Um, so, um, full freedom of redistributing everything. The only, uh, Constraint is uh, uh, that if you modify some parts of Gemma, of the Gemma core, you must release it with the same license as open source. Uh, we, we expect that this is just right because the uh, Gemma implements uh, standards. Uh, normally, companies do not need to uh, close the source of uh, something that is standard, and uh, uh, if you have some bug fixes, just try that you release it in the, in the wild. 
um, there are um, we may have taken other choice, but uh, the, the this is a very we think this is a very good choice for a, for a project of this type. Okay, this is roughly the the reference architecture of of uh, Gemma. We have a south well, everything works on the on the on the gateway. Uh, we have a southbound interface which is uh, wrapped by the what we call the device API. Uh, as you can uh, see, we have uh, uh, full support for the ZigBee world. This means that G uh, Gemma includes um, um, a fully fledged uh, object called the gateway abstraction layer. It's a standard, an entity standardized in the ZigBee uh, alliance with all its cluster library, and that uh, by default it provides support for all. ZigBee uh, devices, uh, and especially Z ZigBee Home Automation 1.2 devices. Uh, for reference, uh, Home Automation 1.2 is uh, ZigBee Home Automation 1.1 plus the contribution that the Energy Atom Association has provided to the ZigBee Alliance. Uh, there are uh, plans uh, also to support other kinds of the devices. This is something that the association is working on, and that's mostly IP-based devices. Uh, but that is a work in progress, and uh, uh, the plan is to wrap these devices through other adapters. Uh, the core of, of Gemma is the, 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 the CHEMS, is where you have all the smart uh, fun functionalities, including the scheduler, uh, the possibility to host uh, and control local policies and the uh, energy engine. Uh, in there, we also ha have the plan to support third-party plugins. And uh, northbound, we have the what we call the Open API, uh, that is basically a REST cushion of uh, APIs that uh, application developers can use to to develop uh, applications that interacts with the chance. Um, so this is the reference design that we are following right now. Uh, the, if you access to the website today, you will find this design described in a couple of wiki pages for the uh, next release. The, um, the current, the concrete situation of the code is a slightly more complex than this, um, because basically we followed all the namings of the ZigBee Association also for internal components. So if you're not, if you're not a ZigBee expert, it may be a little bit difficult to navigate the code today. Um, so the, this is something that we are uh, trying to simplify a little bit, uh, but uh, of course, if you have any, if you want to try out Gemma and if you have any question, I will be happy to support you in also navigating the code. So this is, I think, my last slide, just to, to give a glimpse for the next step. We have the next releases anticipated due in October, so there will be, we will have a couple of really in, intense months of, uh, of uh, working, uh, which will basically work on, on uh, unifying the REST API and uh, uh, insulate a little bit better the internal components. We also we are also working on a Metro style GUI. Metro is the style of uh, Windows, uh, Windows 8 like feel, uh, look and feel uh, with, uh, with some web socket, socket support. Uh, you probably can find some proof of concept already there, uh, but it's not uh, fully integrated with the main uh, master branch. Um, the release is planned for October also uh, because we, um, we are also planning a hackathon event. This may be interesting for you if you are interested in doing some work in uh, home automation or ambient intelligence. So the, it has not been uh, made official yet. Uh, it will be probably be advertised later on, maybe in August or September, but the association is, is setting up a hackathon tentatively by the end of November, and that will be an event where this new release will be made available to developers that want to do something with the uh, ecosystem of Energy at Home, uh, competing for some prizes uh, made available by the Energy at Home Association. So uh, if you are interested, you can subscribe to the uh, Gemma mailing list, we will announce it uh, there or send me an email if you have questions. So I um, 
uh, last uh, last uh, word. Uh, the Fabio mentioned before the energy at home demonstrator. This is uh, basically a full-fledged smart kitchen uh, featuring uh, no one, a washing machine, a fridge, um, several home automation devices and sensors, smart plugs, and uh, uh, there you can see also a picture of an uh, inverter. Uh, this is a NL meter in a, in a box, so we can move it around. And uh, the, the smart info is also there, a uh, small solar panel here. Uh, this is what we use uh, to test bench all the newest developments of uh, Gemma. It's installed uh, in, the, in the ISMB building. Uh, if you want to see it uh, in action, uh, maybe you, uh, you can send an email, we can make a group and we can have a live demonstration. And uh, the, this, this will be probably uh, where the um, results of the hackathon in November will be tested with the real devices. So uh, just some snapshot. This is the current GUI that you can download from the website. As you can see, we have uh, uh, some uh, panel that the user can use to control the devices. So basically, uh, this also works on touch interfaces. So if you click on a, on a lamp, on one of the objects, you can see uh, a dedicated uh, access to the device feature on the bottom. There is also some view providing information to the user about how the home is interacting with the grid. So there you can see the, uh, uh, that the, there is some uh, production uh, being made locally and uh, some consumption. And uh, for, for this reason, energy is flowing both uh, for, from the grid and, uh, and the solar panel to our loads. Some history of consumption. Uh, this is something very technical. Uh, um, and it's basically an, an administrator console which has been uh, recently released. Uh, this is useful for people, uh, for developers that want to look more at the Zigbee part of the system. And uh, basically it's, uh, it gives information about how the different Zigbee messages are being exchanged uh, and how different devices are communicating with each other. So now uh, let, let's... Uh, leave the floor to Ivan for the hands-on uh, session. Hopefully it will work. So uh, if, you have a, a career, if you will have a career in, in, in engineering, you must know that uh, the demos have a really bad uh, habit of failing when, when you do them. So I would anticipate that. But let, let's hope that uh, Murphy's law do not apply here. Can you hear me? Uh, so basically this will be a quick presentation uh, and uh, I will show you uh, how to interact with the uh, Gemma framework, uh, especially with the home automation, Zigbee home automation devices. First of all, uh, to get in touch with the software, you uh, might have to know the tool chain uh, we have used. Uh, we are using uh, Maven. Uh, Maven is a popular uh, tool for uh, Java project. We use it because um, we, with the OSGI, uh, we found it uh, useful because uh, you can uh, generate also the target platform, uh, which is calculated automatically uh, from uh, each module's uh, dependency. Uh, your code uh, can be adapted to the uh, uh, integrated development environment uh, uh, independently. So you can generate files for, for uh, Eclipse or uh, IDEA. And uh, it automatically can uh, launch unit tests while compiling the code. So helps uh, finding out bugs uh, if there is uh, any. Uh, to get the code, uh, you can uh, use this, uh, this command or uh, your favorite uh, basically JIT graphical user interface. And uh, to build it, uh, there is a, a command. Uh, it is available also in the wiki, this, this uh, description. So you can, uh, you can copy and paste it. Uh, this will basically uh, try to compile everything and then generate Eclipse projects. Then you should import projects uh, that you are, have uh, just created in our uh, Eclipse environment. And uh, once you imported it, you can run, launch the, the Gemma framework. 
So, uh, what I'm going to show you is uh, some uh, simple uh, demonstration on uh, how to interact with these devices, which are uh, smart plugs. Uh, basically, are uh, radio controlled uh, CB plugs like uh, this one. Uh, they have a, a little button I can press one time to uh, basically switch it off and then switch it on again. And uh, I can uh, also get uh, the consumption information uh, from this plug. So, uh, let me open my clip environment, okay. Uh, I have already imported um, all the, oh, sorry. I have already imported all the uh, Gemma projects uh, plus uh, another project, uh, which uh, I will talk about it later. By the way, uh, here there are all uh, Gemma projects which have been uh, imported. I can um, select between, uh, among the run configuration, the most suitable to me. Uh, I use uh, Linux, so I run uh, Java Gal Linux. And then when I choose run, the software starts. Um, if I open the browser on the localhost 8080 uh, slash system slash console, I will see the Felix web console, which is an, uh, an OSGI component providing some uh, web user interface and a specific tab called AH has been uh, inserted here to uh, ease the installation of new devices. Uh, in this page, you should see uh, all devices. The two devices you see here, uh, the first one, green at home, and the second one are uh, virtual devices. They are not real, and they have been created to uh, satisfy some internal use cases of the, of the software. So if I want to add a, a device, I basically go to, go to installing appliances. Okay, the smart plug was already there. Just delete it before. Okay. And then select open network. Select. Once you select open network, basically what I'm going to do is to switch on this plug and then by long pressing the only button, you will see the blue light blinking. It will look for available Zigbee networks, which are, uh, which are around here. The blinking change, the frequency. So basically it is joining joining the, the network. If I load the page, I can see that there is an appliance. This is the smart plug. I can click on, uh, sorry. Okay, I can click on install. And then the appliances will be between, am among the installed appliances. From this GUI, I can basically uh, know everything about the appliance and also query uh, for uh, values and perform operations on the, on the plug. For instance, I can switch it on and off from here. The toggle will change the actual status of the plug. And what I'm uh, going to show you now is how to do this programmatically with your, uh, with your own bundle integrated with the uh, Gemma framework. So basically, uh, the bundle I'm going to show is already available. Already, already available on uh, GitHub. It is a simple uh, command provider implementation. 
uh, basically a common provider is a noise gi component which uh, lets you uh, let, let me be simple call a java method by specifying a command on the OSGI console. So this is quite simple. And uh, uh, the component, is this one, it consists of only one class. And this class provides two methods. The first one is uh, list appliances. With this method, uh, you can, within this method, you can find the code that is needed to list all the appliances which have been installed in the Energy Atom uh, system. Uh, there is a uh, precise taxonomy, which is uh, reflecting the uh, ZB taxonomy. So we have an appliance, a list of appliances that we can have from this uh, appliances proxy object. Uh, this for each appliance, we uh, can enumerate the endpoints that this appliance provides. And then for each endpoint, we can get the list of clusters. Uh, and each cluster, each cluster is uh, basically a set of uh, functionalities provided by the appliance. So if I connect to the OSGI console, I can invoke the command. And what you will see here, that this smart plug has been listed and it has two endpoints. The first uh, endpoint, the endpoint uh, number one, let's say, is the most interesting maybe for us. And uh, the method we are interested in uh, maybe are get instantaneous demand, which uh, give us the uh, actual instantaneous uh, consumption of, uh, of the device attached to the smart plug, and in this case, is my PC. Or this uh, exec toggle method here, which uh, can uh, let us turn on and off the, uh, um, <coughs> the plug. Uh, there is also another method which have been exposed uh, as a command, which is invoke cluster method. And uh, using, the, using this simple code, you can invoke uh, uh, basically a functionality on the plug. It takes some uh, parameters, and um, I have prepared some uh, example commands to toggle on and off the um, the appliance, for instance, this one, you can use it from the SGI console to uh, exit, to perform the same operation I've shown you on the web interface. Okay, the plug has been switched off, so my PC is disconnected, but if I run it again, the plug has been turned on. Then, the other interesting thing is that I can get the instantaneous demand of my PC. Okay, 577, what is this number? Uh, I don't think that my PC is actually consuming uh, 500, uh, more than 500 uh, bats. So in order to get the real value, I have to perform a couple of more queries. The first one is to get the unit of measure, and this is the command, and zero means kilowatts. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> it's, uh, it's something which is uh, are coded in the Zigbee specifications. And then I have to invoke uh, the get multiplier and get divisor method, methods, which are uh, necessary to get the real value. This is the get multiplier, it is one. The get divisor is 10,000, so I should divide 570 by 10,000, and uh, uh, it will be 0 0.0577 uh, kilowatts. So this is the actual consumption of, uh, of my computer. 
but of course, like this, uh, since I have to invoke uh, one method uh, for each command, can be uh, not, not so easy to do, but programmatically is a lot more easy. Since, as you see, you just need seven lines of code to invoke a method. This line is just split, but you, you don't need to know uh, a lot of things. And also the other method, which is exploited in this uh, internal APIs, uh, is pretty straightforward. The taxonomy is pretty easy to, to understand. Okay, uh, that's all from, uh, from my side. Do you have any question? Thanks.